The original Circumetnia line began at Catania Porto, but in 1999 the original 950mm line, sometimes known as the Italian meter gauge, was converted to standard gauge and became part of the Catania Metro. We see a heavily spray painted two car electric multiple unit and another M88 unit arriving at the single platform. Metropolitana and the Circumetnia are operated by the same company, Peravia Circumetnia. When open, the Catania Metro was reputed to be the world's shortest metro with its six stations along a 2.39 mile length. A metro train approaches the FS station at Catania Main Station. This is the other end of the line at Borgo. Above ground we find the headquarters of the Ferrovia Circumetnia and the start of the meter gauge line. And this is the above ground Borgo station, complete with its Italian meter gauge track. A visit to the Circumetnia workshops was then made. The rolling stock comprises a wide variety of single car diesel electric and diesel mechanical units built by Fiat and Breeder from 1970s onwards. Not all units were bought new. The six units designated RALN came from the Porto Empedocle Ribera line when it was closed in 1971. These units were substantially rebuilt at the Borgo workshops. At least two different liveries, different door positions and a wide variety of front ends gives a fascinating variation to the units. December 2015, four two-car Polish-built units arrived, and these look completely out of place alongside the existing 1970-built railcars. Their disc brakes are located outside the bogey wheels. They look very vulnerable to damage, but no doubt make replacement easier. The well-equipped workshop can carry out all types of work, apart from new build. The Ferrovia Circumetna was opened throughout in 1895 and ran from Catania, inland and clockwise around the base of Mount Etna, ending up 69 miles later at Riposta. It is the sole surviving 950mm gauge line in Sicily. In 1999, the initial 2.5 miles was converted to standard gauge metro line, and eventually a few more miles will be converted to metro. What will happen to the workshop at Borgo remains to be seen. Initially, motive power was steam, using O6O tanks built by Breda of Milan. One of these locomotives is pinned at Borgo station, and another is in the museum at Bronte. The first two locomotives have been built by Hawthorne Leslie & Co. of Newcastle in 1890. Our journey over the line began at Borgo Station. Here a very well filled RAL diesel mechanical unit pulling a trailer car arrives at Borgo. An ADE unit leaves Borgo and this is quickly followed into the station by another ADL unit but with a different front end. This was to be our train.
the gradient profile of the line shows an almost continuous rise to the summit of 3,216 feet above sea level at Rocca Calana. The ruling gradient is 1 in 50, and the climb out of Ghiare is particularly severe. Here our train heads up the grade out of Borgo. Houses flank the line for the first eight miles or so, and eventually the metro line will extend as far as Nesima, which is seen here. The track is generally in excellent condition, with considerable use of welded rail on modern concrete sleepers. Here we arrive at Via Corrente. It's a passing place where we wait for the arrival of an RAL unit and its trailer. looks typically Italian. Lots of switches in here. We head off again from Via Corrente, now into a much less densely populated area, and we continue to climb across ancient lava flows from Mount Etna. <laughs> Here the track formation has been repositioned to allow better entry and exit into curves and to avoid lad subsidence. The approach to the ancient town of Adrano is through a none too salubrious environment. It's 25 miles northwest of Catania and has a population of about 37,000. There are three stations serving the town and the line has been rerouted into tunnel with two of the stations now being underground. They look far too modern and now we're keeping with the rest of the line. The next stop was at Bianca Villa Pazillo, 20 miles and 54 minutes from Catania. The town has only 23,000 inhabitants, yet boasts four stations beginning with the name Bianca Villa. We crossed the train for Catania here, and were surprised to see it consisted of three ADE rail cars. Here the track cuts through an old lava flow. It's been colonized by vegetation, so the flow is probably a thousand years or more old. Throughout the journey we could see Mount Etna quietly smoking away on the right of the train, and sometimes puffing out quite a lot of black smoke. Bronte has a population of 20,000 and is a major station on the Circumetnia line. It had a shed, now converted to a museum. It appears to be a crew changing point. We had lunch here, while the station master was busy booking the train and setting the path for a train that was following us into Bronte. Change trains at Bronte. 
The track suddenly became very busy. The rail car we had travelled in is on the right, and behind it is another rail car from Giare, which had arrived and coupled on to it, and together returned to Catania Borge. On the left is the train which we had just seen coming in from Catania. Meanwhile, we crossed the tracks to where the highlight of our trip was waiting, a 1938 Fiat AL56 unit, number 6, the last of the batch of 6 that worked on the Circumetnia up to about 1973, when sufficient new or refurbished units took their place. There's one other ALN56, number 1, in the Museum of Bronte, a non-working exhibit. The station master secured the track access bar after number 6 had left the shed. And it then ran slowly into and through the station. It later made a false arrival for photographers. Notice that the units had first class accommodation. There's an engine and driving position at each end, the driver being completely open to the rest of the train. The instrument panel and driving controls are very compact. A run pass through a relatively recent lava flow. These rail cars could attain a maximum speed of 75 km an hour, it's 46 miles an hour, but on the circumet near the nature of the track meant that the average journey speed didn't exceed 28 miles an hour. These rail cars, or Litterina in Italian, could be built on underframes of three different lengths. This is the longest type, and the designation AL56 meant it had a capacity of 56 passengers. Unfortunately, a landslip prevented us reaching the end of the line, and we had to finish our journey on the circumet near at Lingua Glossa.